Uh, now we have uh, on the show, we have uh, Gary, how is it Kirsch? Excellent. Yes. All right. Got nailed it the first time. First time. Area manager for ITC. And uh, this is the monthly ITC energy report. Today, we're going to be talking about the environment. Uh, so thanks for joining us today, Gary. Why don't you kick it off by reminding viewers of what ITC does, because uh, uh, they see these power lines and they think, oh, it's got to be DTE, but not the case, right? I certainly appreciate it. And thank you, uh, Mike and Matt, for the opportunity to be here today. It's always a privilege for me to be able to share the ITC story. But when we think of the power that keeps the lights on in our homes and businesses, we need to consider it flows through a three-part system. It starts in a plant that creates the generation of energy. Then it travels long distances through our high voltage transmission lines, such as ITCs. And finally, it's carried to smaller local lines called distribution lines, bringing that electricity back into our homes and buildings. In some of the uh, things that individuals may not know is that ITC is the nation's largest independent electricity transmission company. And unlike other local power companies, we are uniquely focused on just the transmission portion, that center portion of the system. We appreciate the opportunity to develop, build, and maintain the transmission infrastructure that holds that three-part system together and have the ability to move that power from where it's generated to where it's needed. And we also often try to use the correlation that just like our highways move a lot of people across the country through a network of roads, we do the same thing with energy. Uh, my role is ITC area manager. I'm responsible for our permitting and outreach for vegetation management and maintenance projects, as well as outreach and relationship building with our local, state, and federal agencies. Uh, some of those include the local elected officials, uh, Michigan DNR, U.S. Forest Service, U.S. Fish and Wildlife. And more pertinent probably to this conversation is internally to ITC. I work directly with ITC's environmental manager and coordinating our efforts to verify that our maintenance and vegetation projects meet our environmental regulations as well as ITC's stewardship uh, outreach. I don't know if you know, but a couple of months ago, I did the helicopter ride uh, with, with the crew out of Ann Arbor Airport and flew over the lines. I always enjoy that. Some people are a little nervous flying over high tension lines very low, but for me, it was a rush, so I enjoyed it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was amazed at uh, how nice of a job you guys do. I mean, the, the trees are way cut back and I was amazed that there was farmers working underneath the lines because I guess, you know, how high can corn grow, right? So uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very much aware of the program. So anyway, Matt, go ahead, next question. Well, let's let's kick things off with an overview of ITC's environmental commitment. What does it mean uh, when you say ITC is committed to the environment? Certainly. And th that's an honor that uh, very few people have to ride in that helicopter. So that was uh, that's a great thing. You can check off your bucket list. That's it. <laughs> Done it a couple. Did it one time with your boss. Uh, so Simon and I did it one time a couple of years ago. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And it may have been our farm. I, I work under those power lines since I was uh, born. We've got a farm that cr the transmission lines cross to our farm. So very well aware and uh, know our corn has never reached that uh, the bottom of the line. So we're very Yeah, 100 to feet. That, you don't get corn that high usually. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> But at ITC, we pride ourselves in being good stewards of the environment, as you mentioned. And we try to make environmentally conscious decisions in our day-to-day -day operations. And that includes everything from designing our transmission lines to how much paper we use in our offices. Now, ITC realizes that each of these actions has environmental impacts. Everything we do has an impact on the environment. So we work to implement programs that are environmentally responsible uh, in working together with nature. As employees, we are extremely fortunate to work for a company that encourages our environmental engagement. Going so far as to have uh, kind of a mantra that environmental stewardship starts at home. And a perfect living example of that is if you've had the opportunity to visit our headquarters in Novi, mm -hmm. we have 92 acres on our campus, and that features a number of things, but a few of those is a naturalized transmission corridor that crosses next to the building. We have a diverse woodlands, open green space, wetlands, a nature trail that our employees can walk, and a large pond out front that is kind of like the showpiece of when people are going on 12 mile and M5. Uh, these grounds are maintained under sustainable en environmental principles 
that we utilize uh, both our employees, uh, community groups, and then we utilize those individuals to implement uh, educational outreach programs. And also we have uh, on our campus, as well as throughout our corridors, we try to also have uh, management for invasive species while also promoting the habitat for native, endangered, and threatened species as well. Okay. Well, and I guess that well, that helped you earn the Wildlife Habitat Council Award, right, that you recently received? Yes, we did. It was a very uh, interesting and, and enjoyable night. We had the opportunity to uh, be down in the book Cadillac. I was able to attend because we were actually local here in Detroit. And it was uh, we were honored to receive the 2022 Gold Tier Program Award and also the Forest Project Award. And that's uh, from the Wildlife Habitat Council. And that covers our projects, some of them that I just mentioned at our Novi headquarters. Uh, but one of the interesting facts that I don't know if uh, many people would know, ITC has actively participated in the Wildlife Habitat Council program since way back in 2008. And we're very proud that with the addition of this year's awards, the two awards we got this year, ITC now holds 14 Wildlife Habitat Council conservation certifications. And the certification is when we go through the process and we have to turn applications in and they actually review the programs that we have and verify that we're actually implementing them. And the implement implementation of those programs uh, includes restoration, creation, protection, and enhancement of habitat, as well as the removal of invasive species, and then making sure that we have management of those sites. And those 14 certifications cover not only our Michigan properties, but also in Iowa. And uh, one of the things that I know marketing uh, has us getting out there and making sure that we're promoting as employees, but also as a company, is that we're focused on a greater grid for a greener future. Hmm. Can you tell me, uh, uh, give me a few examples of how you involve the team, how you involve employees in these environmental initiatives? Sure. One of the things that uh, ITC, once you uh, become an employee, not just in the environmental side of it, but also as, as a team, if we're doing a new planning project or maintenance, it's very early on that you find out that you are part of the team. It's not just somebody that's telling you what to do and it's not management down, it's somewhere in between because the employees have an opportunity to be able to participate. And our commitment to the environment starts with our employees. Each one of us as an employee have an obligation. And over the years, we've implemented a waste reduction program and the employees have embraced and actually continuing to prove on it. And since 2012, ITC has reduced its landfill contributions by roughly 50%. And that is a major thing when you have almost 700 people in a, in a facility, as well as across uh, not only Michigan, but our other facilities. We're very proud of being able to reduce our landfill contributions. Uh, ITC employees are invited to participate and suggest conservation and habitat projects. And in some instances, we've done those. We've included uh, butterfly gardens. We've included uh, bluebird houses on our property. And two of those were, uh, or both of those, I should say, were suggested by one of our employees. Uh, we also have other programs that either are suggested by our employees or the environmental team. And each of these programs I've written a few down. I want to make sure I, I didn't forget them. So I've got a few down here I'd like to, to talk about. Yeah, go ahead. And the, um, the Great Backyard Bird Count. And this is something that's across the nation, but ITC actively participates. And this is where we're tracking migratory patterns and trends across the U.S. And this is a partnership with the National Audubon Society. On ITC's property, we have a, a vernal uh, pond, a little pool, I should say. And the we working with the Michigan Vernal Pool Project, we have employees that go out there and observe the wildlife and vegetation that occurs in the pond from our observations on the edge, or even at, uh, animals and uh, plantings that are near the, the vernal pools. We've also had employees volunteer to assist in the installation and maintenance of corridor native species demonstration gardens, as I mentioned with our, our butterfly gardens, and then as well as a pollinator garden and that's right outside of our window. So from uh, probably the second floor up, you can still watch that and you can do see the birds and the other pollinators flying in and out of that garden. Uh, cool. And on a few occasions we've had as employees had to roll up our sleeves and go out there and uh, address some of the invasive species such as garlic mustard and other non-desirables that were on the property. And we as employees were actually physically 
involved and engaged in that. It wasn't just a, a contract where we hired somebody else. We actually got to directly involved. And one of the most rewarding activities, I think, for our employees is the monitoring of our bluebird nesting boxes and our bat roosting boxes. I personally have not been too involved with the bat ones, but I do have uh, the bluebird nesting boxes I was involved with building and also having them installed. So it's a neat project to go out there and, and find out how many new bluebirds we have every year. Speaking of birds, uh, there has been some concern about birds landing on transmission lines and what that may or may not do uh, to them or with them. Uh, so what's up with that? What can you talk about there? Sure. That's that's certainly an important issue, and it's something that's uh, very emotional when, when something does happen to a bird, whether it's our lines or somewhere else. But we consistently and constantly work to make sure that our high-voltage high uh, transmission lines can coexist with nature. We've had situations where projects have been in areas where birds frequent, and as I mentioned, sometimes it's a migration path. And if birds contact our high-voltage lines, unfortunately, it can be a problem. And to help divert, deter these birds from contacting our lines, in several situations, we have installed bird diverters. Now, I'm sure your next question will be, what What's are What's a bird, bird diverter? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh... It's a Johnny Carson ad, ad here. Yes. Right? <laughs> there we go. But uh, the bird diverters, it's very, I never knew it until I started with ITC. Bird diverters are highly visible. They're a coil. And that coil is directly attached to the lines so that it makes it more visible for some of the species of, species of larger birds that would be impacting the lines or be impacted by those lines. Uh, and in some areas uh, where our lines have been installed, we've installed more than a thousand of these diverters. Hmm. Now, I'm certainly not qualified to install the diverters, but I certainly appreciate uh, the utility workers who have this job. Now, if we can take one moment to consider the tedious and potentially dangerous task. If I was down on the ground and I had to roll this, this coil around that line, that would be enough of a job. But our utility workers are tethered, tethered, you know, attached to, now this is the outside of a helicopter and you flew in one of the helicopters oh, yeah. and they perform this work as the helicopter kind of hovers over top of our lines. This individual sits on the edge and manually installs each one of these coils one by one. I think Matt just raised his hand. You wanted a job. You get ready to retire, Matt. You want that job, right? So, no? Sure, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's that sounds about exciting, huh? <laughs> you know, in bird diverters are one way. Uh, another way is that uh, if we do have the opportunity to design our lines, we try to design the lines in accordance uh, by the Avian Power Line Interaction Committee, which is also sometimes referenced as APLIC. You might hear that, that mm -hmm. abbreviation. And uh, for there, the applic requirements, we need to make sure that we design our lines and the tower components, that would be the actual structure and the arms that we put up so that we can separate the lines from that structure or from lines to lines at a distance that's great enough that a large bird uh, species, such as maybe an eagle, a hawk or an osprey would not be able to physically make contact with two of those points. Uh, and this uh, avoids any electric electrocution. Yeah, I would but do I it. Say at that point, they become a conductor, right? Yeah. So yes. That's that's what you're looking to avoid. And as you mentioned, you know, our focus would always be to avoid 100% of these, but unfortunately, it's never going to be possible. So we try to do make sure every effort that we can to avoid any of these interactions between the birds and, and our lines when possible. Okay. Well, All we're right, running out of time. Go ahead, Matt. Say it. No, I was just going to say we've reached the end of the segment. So if people would like you know, more information on any of these topics, uh, where should they go? Sure. You can certainly contact ITC and you can go to itctransco.com. And if you, you can actually direct, uh, direct your email directly to me if you want. And that's G Kirsch, K-I-R-S-H. And that's at itctransco.com. And I can certainly get that information back out to anybody within ITC that would have that, uh, that subject matter expert. 